Have the waters of northern Europe become the scene of yet another pipeline sabotage? A year after the Nord Stream pipeline bombings, Finland confirmed this week that it is investigating a rupture in a subsea gas pipeline that stretches all the way to Estonia. And the Finns say the damage was probably caused by outside activity. And that has put it on the radar at NATO. The Baltic Connector Gas Pipeline connects Inku in Finland and Paldiski in Estonia. Now, it was ruptured on Wednesday along with a telecommunications cable connecting the two countries. Repairs are expected to take about five months. In the meantime, worries over the security of Europe's energy infrastructure will only grow. Here is the head of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, speaking earlier today. The important thing now is to establish what happened uh, and uh, how this could happen. If it is proven to be a deliberate uh, attack on a NATO critical infrastructure, uh, then this will be, uh, of course, serious, uh, but it will also be met by a united and a determined response uh, from uh, NATO. All right, I want to bring in Benjamin Schmidt now. He's an energy security expert with the University of Pennsylvania. He testified to the U.S. Congress on Russia's weaponizing of energy, and this summer he paid a visit, in fact, to the Baltic Connector site in Estonia. The perfect man to talk to tonight. Benjamin, it's good to see you again. NATO pledging a strong response if this is found to be a deliberate attack. Do you think that this is sabotage? Is that the only plausible explanation? Well, look, Brent, it's great to see you, and I wish we weren't always uh, meeting under such circumstances with subsea pipeline explosions in the Baltic Sea, but there we are. Um, I will say that right now everything looks like uh, this was a deliberate action, um, and it really is going to come down to the forensic investigation that's been ongoing. Let's, let's step back here. Uh, we first heard about this on Sunday, on October 8th. Uh, when there was a drastic drop in pressure in the pipeline, uh, all the way down to six bar, suggesting uh, to both Ellering on the Estonian side and in, uh, in the, uh, the, the Finnish uh, transmission system operator, gas grid on the, the Finnish side, that there was a leak. And remember, this is kind of the same forensic uh, um, uh, timeline that we had for the Nord Stream ruptures. We didn't know right away that was sabotage. We just knew there were leaks. And of course, over the past 48 hours, we have seen the investigation continue. Um, there were uh, notes of a small, not as large as the Nord Stream blast, but a small seismic event that took place. This could have been, of course, with a small amount of explosives, but also just by mechanically rupturing the pipeline. So there's a number of theories right now about what's going on. I'm, I'm certainly looking into this. And, and this is certainly, as you said, uh, Brent, um, something that I, I've been looking at closely, as you said, I, I visited the site uh, right next door to the Baltic Connector in Poldiski, Estonia, uh, just basically several weeks ago when I was looking at the jetty for the Poldiski FSRU, or Floating Storage and Regasification Unit, as a part of my uh, Penn Kleinman uh, Energy Research Grant that I'm, I'm working on critical infrastructure protection in Northern Europe. And, and I know that you've also you've been doing a lot of research into the Nord Stream um, explosions, the, the bombings. Can you, can you draw some parallels here? And I, I guess the question a lot of people are asking is, with Nord Stream and now with this incident, do both of these roads lead to Moscow? Well, look, we don't know yet. Um, again, the, the, the prudent thing to do here is to gather as much information in both cases, right? The forensic evidence, uh, geospatial commercial satellite imagery that we've seen uh, now with, uh, with, with the Nord Stream investigations. I think the same thing is going to have to be done with Baltic Connector to look for any vessels or uh, any other activity that was going on outside of uh, standard operation, meaning vessels that are operating with their AIS or automatic uh, information systems switched on. Um, so if they, that's the normal operation uh, operating procedure. But if these vessels have their uh, their their AIS switched off, they become what is known as a dark vessel, meaning that I can't go on to uh, a website like Marine Traffic, which has open source uh, ship traffic intelligence, and in, in see where these vessels are. So the the parallels between the two events. Are, are really uh, striking thus far. We saw uh, a pan-Nordic investigation by the four Nordic uh, public broadcasters come out uh, several months ago and show using 
uh, commercial satellite data that a number of Russian subsea capable vessels, government vessels that were mm -hmm. on the sites of the Nord Stream blast, both in June 2022 and some of them just a few days before those blasts in September 2022. Um, and, you know, that that includes this vessel, the uh, Sibiryakov, uh, a, a subsea capable vessel uh, that uh, that the Russians have. Incidentally, uh, this vessel was shown by a Polish uh, consultancy uh, just 24 hours ago to have been in and around the Baltic Connector pipeline uh, in the weeks leading up to this incident. Whether or not it had a direct cause or, mm. or a, a direct hand in the Baltic Connector uh, disaster that we've seen thus far, it's, it's unclear. This will take a lot more data. But, you know, we've seen uh, vessels uh, on AAS that uh, if you spin back the data on a website like Marine Traffic, you yeah. see Russian uh, um, icebreakers basically going right over the site as the explosion uh, allegedly happened. You know, we, we've talked about this before, um, Benjamin. We, we still do not have a final verdict about what happened to the Nord Stream pipelines, um, even a year after the, the, the bombings. Now, Russia says that it wants to join the investigation. Uh, what does that tell you about the notion of sabotage with a Kremlin fingerprint? Well, look, Russia has been wanting to be part of all of these investigations. In fact, it has launched a, a series of, uh, of, of hearings at the UN specifically to try to push this narrative that has been many times debunked that uh, Norway and the United States were somehow uh, involved in the, uh, the, the destruction of the Nord Stream pipelines. Uh, so, so we've seen this over and over. We'll probably see it again, as you said, with the Baltic Connector Pipeline. But there's another thread that's been really captivating the media in both um, uh, English language press, but also German language press, this idea that there was a so-called so pro-Ukrainian sailboat, the Andromeda, that somehow sailed out and, and did sabotage to Nord Stream 1 and 2 last mm -hmm. year. It is very possible that that could be the case. However, uh, a lot of, uh, of expertise around the Baltic Sea really starts to question whether this is technically possible, technically feasible, could be a legitimate false flag operation by the, the Russians. I personally know that the, that sailboat exists. I went up to Vanamunda in, uh, just uh, two weeks ago and actually found it. I walked up and, and saw the, 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 uh, the sailboat. It's a rental sailboat and really nothing very extraordinary about it. But again, mm -hmm. there's been a complete lack of coverage or, or, you know, belated coverage of what the Nordic broadcasters have shown, which are Russian capable, subsea capable vessels, vessels that are actually designed to do seabed warfare. We're on the site. And we've again, unfortunately, have seen one of these possibly what? at the Baltic Connector site. I've got about 30 seconds. Benjamin. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that there has not been a lot of coverage um, in, in the English language media about this? Boy, that's that's the million dollar question, Brent. I'm not entirely sure, and that's something that um, I'm hoping to uh, to publish uh, and and bring some more um, more analysis to soon. Uh, but again, all of these different offshore infrastructure protection uh, scenarios need to be bolstered as much as possible. And one of the biggest things we can do right now, in addition to just having surveillance uh, on the, the sea, is to have more overwatch capability from, uh, you know, from drones, from orbit, et cetera, uh, that allow us to have attribution, because that's the sort of thing that will hopefully stop these sort of incidents from happening if they okay. are deliberate. Uh, because, you know, no one wants to be found out. So that's that's where I think we need to be uh, focused as a NATO alliance. Benjamin Schmidt, as always, good to have you on. Good to get your analysis. Valuable insights. Thank you. Thanks so much, Brent. Great to see you.